It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Tuesday, the 8th of October. I'm Michael Groff. More record-breaking heat is anticipated for the next few days, but temperatures will gradually trend down as we head toward the weekend and next week. Signs of a pattern change coming our way, one that may actually introduce some rain chances into our forecast. We'll talk about that, plus a tropical update. Hurricane Milton on its roller coaster ride once again strengthening. So we'll talk about that and the implications going on there as we take a look at everything else going on too as we dive on in and discuss. First, here's that almanac from yesterday. And once again, here we go. High temperature of 110 degrees in Phoenix on the 7th of October. Oh my goodness. That morning low of 81, both of those set records, a record high and a record warm low temperature for the date, respectively. 93 and 69, those are the averages for this time of year. We won't be anywhere near those for a while. So let's check it out. That's 70 days now this year with a high temperature at or above 110 degrees. 135 days with a high temperature at or above 100. That means... If you look at it, we've had more than half of the 100-degree days we've had this year have actually had highs over 110. That is, that's remarkable. And we've also had 115 days with a low temperature at or above 80. All right, as we take a look outside right now here at 12 noon, we've got mostly sunny sky. 102 degrees at Sky Harbor. It's just dry as a bone out there. Relative humidity, 8%. The dew point, 29. The wind for the southeast at 9 miles per hour, and the barometer is steady. Why is it so hot? Well, it's the same story every single day. High pressure remains in control here over the southwest. Now, the upper heights are coming down just a little bit. But unfortunately, the ground is very dry. The air is very dry. There's really not much to interfere with the sun reaching the surface of the earth. And so it is still very effectively heating the air. And so that's why we're just still very hot. There are a few clouds out there. Uh, we've got this very weak little trough that's coming toward the central California coast. And some slight increase in high level moisture may occur over the next day or so. But realistically we're still going to stay with record-breaking heat through about the end of the week the watch warning map we've got an excessive heat warning in effect through 8 p.m this evening i don't think the national weather service is going to extend that although they might for another day but regardless of if they do or not it's still going to be hot for the rest of the week we also have an air quality alert and elsewhere, really, the big story is Milton. Now we've got hurricane warnings for much of the central portion of the Florida Peninsula, bookended on either side, the northern portion of the peninsula and the southern portion by a tropical storm warning. So places like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, Key West, all under a tropical storm warning, as is the northern portion of the state, all the way up toward Jacksonville. But in the middle, for Tampa, Port Charlotte, Venice, Sarasota, Newport Ritchie, Orlando, Daytona Beach, Melbourne, all those areas under a hurricane warning. Lakeland as well, frostproof, all those places, a hurricane warning now in effect. And there's also storm surge warnings for most of the west coast of Florida. And there could be some storm surge issues even on the east coast as that uh, hurricane crosses the state. And we'll again talk about that in a moment. Convective outlook for today, the marginal risk of severe storms over parts of central and south Florida as uh, we start to feel the effects of Milton here over the next uh, 12 hours or so. And so there could be some isolated tornadoes with the stronger storms as they rotate on in tomorrow. Got the standard slight risk. And again, we'll show you this is the probability of a tornado uh, courtesy of the W of the SPC. And uh, about a 5 to 9% chance from the I-4 corridor, basically from Tampa to Orlando to Daytona Beach on south, and then uh, about a 2 to 4% just north of that. So along and south of the forecast track is where your best chance of a tornado will be. Now, now these are not going to be those long track violent tornadoes that you see over the plain states or the deep south these are quick little spin-up tornadoes that rotate in on those outer bands those feeder bands on 
these tropical cyclones. And they are very difficult to warn for. Um, you know, they don't last very long. Again, they're relatively weak tornadoes, but if they come through your neighborhood, they can still do some damage. So be aware of that. That's always a possibility from a landfalling hurricane. It's not the primary threat, obviously, but it's a concern. So speaking of Milton and the tropics in general, here's the big picture. All right, we've got Leslie. We've got a little area of disturbed weather over the Bahamas, and then we've got Milton. Now, Leslie, this is not it's not going to stick around much longer. This is a weakening system, a tropical storm now gaining latitude. It's going to curve out to the northeast, harmlessly out to sea. Uh, that little area of disturbed weather off uh, near the Bahamas there, east of Florida, that has a low chance to develop. And again, that's moving off to the east, northeast. That's not going to bother anybody in all probability, other than bring some rain to the Bahamas. But here's Milton. And my goodness, the satellite presentation on that, not quite as symmetrical as yesterday, but we are seeing a strengthening once again. Looks like the eye replacement cycle is ongoing here. Look at that. And so the central pressure has dropped once again. Uh, yesterday, remember, this, this started out yesterday as a Category 2, rapidly intensified over several hours. The pressure dropped to under 900 millibars. This, for a time, became one of the five strongest hurricanes ever in the Atlantic Basin. Now, then the pressure went up overnight, and it did lose some of its uh, some of its punch. The winds went from 180 miles per hour yesterday down to about 145 miles per hour. They've since come back to 155 miles per hour. This is kind of on the verge of Category Five. It's kind of right there on the edge between Category Four and Category Five, and a this is going to maintain its strength pretty much. It may come to a cat five and back down to a cat four, but that's pretty much where it's going to stay for the next 12 hours. It will be weakening though, as it approaches the West coast of Florida. Now, when we say weakening, that's not to say you let your guard down or you don't take this as seriously. This will lose some of its intensity and probably be around an, an upper end category three or a middle category three by the time it makes landfall. Uh, near Tampa Bay tomorrow night, late tomorrow night, maybe right around midnight Thursday morning. And really not much change in the overall path of this system. So the implications are really the, the main threat, obviously, that the wind and the storm surge. Okay, storm surge, still expecting 10 to 15 feet of storm surge for Tampa Bay and the surrounding area. Clearwater, St. Pete, Tampa Bay. Uh, down to uh, near Sarasota, okay? 10 to 15 feet storm surge. As mentioned yesterday, you will not survive that. And it's good to see that so many people are evacuating from those areas, those evacuation zones. Uh, and inland, you don't have to worry about storm surge, but you do have to worry about the wind. And we're looking at still category three winds, um, you know, over 115 miles per hour possible through much of Tampa Bay and the surrounding areas of the central part of the Florida Peninsula. Along and south of the track of that hurricane is where the worst of it will be, but just north of there, too. And then the winds will drop off somewhat. But tropical storm force winds are expected all through the Florida Peninsula, because what's going to happen is as this storm approaches the west coast of Florida, yes, it will be losing some of its intensity. It will be undergoing some shear and some dry air intrusion. But as that happens, the wind field expands out. And so tropical storm force winds should encompass the entire Florida Peninsula with hurricane force winds, again, really uh, from right around probably as far north as maybe Ocala, obviously Orlando, uh, all the way down to Tampa Bay, down to around Venice and Sarasota, maybe even as far south as uh, Lake Okeechobee could see some uh, hurricane force wind gusts. Tropical storm force winds all the way down to Miami and Key West, as far north as Jacksonville, maybe even far southeast Georgia could see some uh, tropical storm force winds. And, and again, in those outer bands, those feeder bands with those uh, thunderstorms, you can see some hurricane force wind gusts too. So storm surge, you don't want to take that lightly. And again, even down to Fort Myers and uh, all the way down there to Flamingo, storm surge could be an issue. So yeah, Tampa Bay is where it's the worst, but 
inland and, and look again i've seen people evacuating even from inland areas and moving north and that's probably a good call there's going to be people without power trees are going to be coming down too you have to consider uh, this is another aspect and that's the flash flood potential uh, this thing's going to put down some very heavy rain folks we could see as much as 10 inches of rain maybe a little bit more than that in some areas and so the flash flood potential is now high uh, again across the central part of the florida peninsula tampa bay lakeland up toward Orlando, a moderate risk of flash flooding really all the way up to near Jacksonville and southward uh, down toward uh, near Fort Myers, just north of Fort Myers could see some flash flooding. You could see flash flooding conceptually uh, all the way up to the nature coast and all the way down toward Miami. There's a low risk of that down there, but there's still a risk. Uh, so very heavy rain will be a problem. And so you take the heavy rain and it's already been raining the last few days before this. The ground is very saturated. These winds, these are category three hurricane winds. And even away from that, tropical storm force winds, given the saturated ground, will easily uproot trees and that could take out those power lines. So some people are going to be without power for weeks. So, yeah, not a bad call if you want to evacuate even from inland areas. But. Your risk threshold is different from mine, and so you got to do what you feel is best. All right, so that's the latest on Milton. We'll, of course, have a more comprehensive update uh, probably later this afternoon or tonight, as we've been doing here on this channel. Let's bring it back closer to home here for us here in Arizona. Boy, we, we look at all that rain. We'd love to see some rain. We're not going to see any, really. This is the precipitation outlook valid through Tuesday morning of next week. Rain amounts in Phoenix, nothing statewide, basically nothing regionwide, basically nothing. As the main storm track stays far, far away from us. So let's get into the particulars of what's going on with our weather in more detail. To do that, we explore the models, see what the future may hold. Here we go, the GFS. This is the 12Z run. It's valid. 5 o'clock this afternoon. There's Milton out over the Gulf. There's high pressure in control here. Got a trough over the northeast. You got a trough off the Pacific Northwest coast. What it means for us down at the surface for the rest of the day today, a few clouds, but otherwise mostly sunny, still very hot. Highs 104 to 108. I don't think we're going to make it to 110 today. Is it possible? Well, at this point, yeah, I'd say it is possible, but more than likely you fall just shy of that 100 degree, 110 degree threshold. Then for tonight, the good news is we'll, we'll have partly cloudy uh, sky in the evening, then mostly clear overnight. Lows with the relatively dry air around should be fairly pleasant. Most of us will get down in the 70s, maybe right around 80 for the urban core. And then tomorrow, again, mostly sunny and hot. But we'll subtract a degree or two from the afternoon highs, probably closer to 102 to 106. Same story on Thursday, 102 to 106. The sky is sunny, the air dry. Friday, same thing, about 101 to 105. And we'll see that slow downtrend in temperatures by this weekend. 100 to 104 on Saturday. The sky mostly sunny, continued dry. Some afternoon breezes at times through most, most of the forecast period, but that's about it. Sunday, yeah, highs about 98 to 102. We'll continue to subtract a degree or two each day. Let's go to Monday. Highs around 96 to 100. The ridge is weakening. It's beginning to lose its influence here over the southwest, but we're still... I should point out here, 100 degrees in Sunday. Uh, Sunday is is the 13th of October. I mean, that's mid-October. We're still talking about 100 degrees. So that's still way above average. But at least we're seeing the, the trend down. Uh, Monday is the 14th of October. And again, we're, we're still talking about 100 degree temperatures. But then here we go to a week from today. This is Tuesday, the 15th. Okay, high pressure is still around across the West and up into central Canada. But notice that we do see troughing along the Pacific Northwest coast and the, the overall pattern across North America is going to start to change at least, at least a little bit, especially for Western North America. We're going to see this trough continuing to deepen. So by the time we get to Wednesday, the 16th, look what happens here. Got negative height anomalies coming down the west coast toward Arizona, and this has been on the last few GFS runs. Is this going to happen? Well, we'll see, but there are signs that things are starting to change. This ridge is getting pinched here. 
And so we're going to see the heights coming down and potentially, if this is right, not only would the heights be coming down, but more of a southerly southwesterly flow, more of a difluent flow with a trough approaching. We might even see a couple of showers across parts of the state. But the big story would be cooler temperatures. Uh, we'd have afternoon highs dropping to near normal, maybe even, maybe even dare I say it, I don't even know if, if, if I know how to say this anymore, uh, but be below normal, yeah, below normal. I believe that's how you say that. I know it's a concept. I, I've i heard about it. We studied that uh, throughout uh, my meteorology courses and physical geography courses. and all. We, we heard about below normal. I just never thought I'd actually see it. Right now, it's still a theory, though. Let's let's keep going. Let's go out 10 days. you got to have a sense of humor about this stuff, folks. Uh, go out 10 days. Uh, this is Thursday the 17th. And look at that, an upper low here over the southwest. And if that's right, this little low just closing off, yeah, that could certainly not only cool us off, but bring in a chance of some showers, maybe a few thunderstorms across the area. But I'm going to tell you this right now. This is 10 days out. If you know forecasting a closed low a few days out is risky business uh but this is just nothing but throwing darts right now but again the gfs has shown a fairly consistent uh tendency to develop this low and more deep troughing or negative height anomalies here over the southwest by the middle and latter part of next week so you know let's at this point look there's nothing wrong with having some hope not saying this is going to happen, but let's just, let's hope. All right? Why not? Hope is free. Costs you nothing. It's something to look forward to. All right. Let's check out rainfall for Phoenix off the GFS Ensemble. The control member is up around a third of an inch. The mean is around a tenth of an inch. And there are some members, there's certainly a discernible sect of the GFS Ensemble that wants to bring in some precipitation at some point over the next uh about at 10 days, a little less than that, a few members less than that. The European ensemble is not quite so much so, uh, still very dry. Temperatures off the national blend of models and the clear trend is down. And by the middle part of next week, yeah, we could be talking about highs not only in the 90s, but maybe dropping toward the lower 90s out there toward the middle and latter part of next week. And do I want to ask this question? Should we do this? I mean, I asked this quite a while ago. Look, are we done with the 100 degree days after the middle part of next week? Is that going to be it? Or will we just continue with 100s into November? Well, I don't know. Uh, normally, I would say absolutely this will be the end of it. Uh, but this this year, uh, if expect the unexpected. So right now, yes, that theoretically should be the last of the 100 degree days. Theoretically. All right, that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion will be back here tomorrow morning. Uh, my next video, uh, we sh will probably do another Milton update here this either this afternoon or this evening. Um, and obviously tomorrow we'll We'll talk about that here on this video and on a separate video as well. Uh, people seem to like those updates, and I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from the emails and the comments. So um, we'll continue to do those for you here on this channel. Sometimes, you know, conditions do warrant that. We have people that live here that know people, of course, in Florida, or some people watch us from other parts of the country, believe it or not. And some people want to know what's going on down there. So we'll keep you updated on all of that. Anyway, if you like these videos, then be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. If you really like what we do here and you want to support us monetarily, yeah, please do. Groffshow at gmail.com is the PayPal address. That's G-R-O-F-F -F show at gmail.com for PayPal. That's the preferred method. Or to make it easier, you can just click that thanks icon below the video here on YouTube and make a monetary contribution that way. The executive producer of the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion is my one and only, the sweetest of all time, the Asian sensation and proprietor of SweetChildAZ.com.org and the Facebook page of the same name, Sweet Child Arizona. Talking about my Michelle, check her out. Check out everything Michelle related linked up down in the description. Also, check out our streaming station available 24-7, 365. What is it called? It's called KMGX. What do we do there? We play a ton of music. We have a lot of fun with it. So check that out too. All right. Thank you guys so much for 
all of your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. Please be safe. We still want you to stay cool, stay hydrated out there, and have yourselves a beautiful rest of your Tuesday. <laughs>